Hi, welcome to another video. Recently, I was scrolling through Twitter and found out that MKBHD launched an app called Panels, which is a wallpaper app. I just glanced over it and moved on because I'm not one of those who likes to use wallpapers and stuff. I just keep the default wallpaper that the company gives me because I'm too lazy. Anyway, I looked at it and left. But when I came back to Twitter, I found it filled with people criticizing it for how bad it is, how many ads it has, its premium membership, and stuff like that. So, instead of trusting random Twitter users, I looked into it myself. First, I went to the site, and I thought the site wasn't too bad. It looks fine, like a basic web page. Although I don't know why there's so much space here and why this text is so big. It looks like it ate junk food, like me. Another thing I noticed is that these social media links lead nowhere. However, these top links do lead to their social media handles, so that's a rookie mistake, boys. Anyway, then I checked out the app itself. It didn't ask me for tracking or anything, like most people said. Maybe that's because I'm on Android, I don't know. Anyway, I just skipped the login process, and it asked me to choose from some artists I didn't recognize. So, I clicked on them, thinking I'd see their profiles, but to my surprise, it just selected the artist instead of showing their work. So, I guess I had to randomly select one based on the banner images. Anyway, once I did that, I got to this page with a carousel and some wallpapers, it's kind of cool, but I also get ads sometimes. That's definitely an issue. So, I tried selecting a wallpaper, and it asked me to watch an ad just to download the SD quality, which was very disappointing. To get the HD quality, I'd need a membership, which is quite expensive, to say the least. Apart from that, if you look at the app, you can see it's very unpolished. Like, what is this? Why is this font so big? And if we go over here, you'll see that the sign-in button looks like something we used to make in prototypes. Plus, what's the difference between For You and Explore? Also, I can't change the five artists I chose at the start, which is another issue. I can't browse artist pages directly either. I need to first find one of their wallpapers and then go through there. Even after watching ads, you still can't use all the wallpapers. So, that's disappointing too. So, that's all this app has to offer. It's definitely a very unpolished app with many issues. Even if I talk about the concept, it feels a bit too much for me. These days, you can generate stuff like this with AI. I'm not sure if these are AI-generated, but we can definitely create something similar with AI. And not just that. We could even make the entire app with AI. So, you know what? Today, we'll try to make something like this app using AI. I was already thinking of doing a video where I show you how to create production-ready apps with AI. So, today, we'll do just that. Now, let's talk about what we'll be doing. I'll be creating an app, and to create it, we can use a bunch of tools, like Swift for iOS or Java for Android. Yes, Java. Anyway, I won't be using those. I'll be using React Native and Expo. If you don't know about Expo or React Native, just Google them. But basically, Expo allows us to focus on React code, and it builds the app for both iOS and Android on its own. So, all we need to do is write React Native code, and it handles everything else. That's the programming language we're using. But we'll also need AI to write the code for us, because I won't be doing it manually. For the AI model, I'll obviously be using Claude 3.5 Sonnet, because it's the best coding model that can code better than me. However, we can't use the model directly. We need a coding interface as well. So, I'll be using Claude Dev for that, because it's the best one, and plugs right into VS Code, 
where we can give it prompts and watch it do its thing. Also, I won't be using a backend for this app because we don't need one. I mean, a wallpaper app doesn't need login features and stuff. For wallpapers, we'll use Unsplash's API. Unsplash is a platform where people can upload images to be used by others for free, like stock images, and it has a free tier API that we'll use to source our wallpapers. So, let's get started. First, we'll create an Expo app. To do that, run the npx create Expo app command, and it will ask you for a project name. Just enter whatever you want, and boom, the Expo project will be created. Once that's done, open it up in VS Code. Make sure you have Claude Dev installed. You can easily do that by going to Extensions, searching for it, and installing it. Once that's done, you can start using it. Just open it up, set up your API keys through the settings, and once you've done that, we're good to go. Also, I'll be using Claude 3.5 Sonnet, but I'll be using it via Google Vertex AI here, because they have recently added Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and it has $300 worth of free credit, which is pretty good, but it doesn't support prompt caching which means that if you actually use it with Anthropic, then the price will be very much cheaper than what you will see in the video going forward. So, make sure that you take this into consideration when looking at the price. Now, this is the first prompt I'm giving it, which is a basic explanation of what I want. Once we send it, it'll start generating the code. Just wait a bit and you'll see it has generated the code and asks for approval. Just approve it. Once approved, we can now run the app and see what it did. To run the Expo app, simply run the npm run web command and it'll start up. You can also run it in an iOS or Android emulator, but I'm running it in the web environment because I don't have Xcode installed yet. Anyway, here's the app. It looks kind of cool. I mean, it's nowhere near what the app needs to be, but it's a good start. Now, let's ask it to do more. I'm going to give it a screenshot of the home page and ask it to replicate that. As you can see, it's doing it now, and it's done. Just approve everything, and it's ready. Now, let's check it out. Yeah, it looks pretty good now. It's looking much better. However, it's still not perfect. The carousel isn't working, so I sent it a prompt to fix that, and it did. If we check it now, the carousel is working too. Next, we need to ask it to create an inner wallpaper page where we can set the wallpaper. I'll give it a screenshot to replicate, and once we do that, you can see it's working on it, and it's done. If we look at it now, it's pretty good. But there was an issue. It just printed text over the image, which made it hard to read in some cases. So, I asked it to add an overlay below the text, and it did that as well, making it look much better. After that, I worked more on the home page, asking it to remove margins and improve the layout. I'm not showing all the footage here because the video would get too long, but I'll post an extended, three-hour version for members only where I'll also share all the prompts. So, consider becoming a member. It starts at just $5, and you get access to a bunch of videos with more coming soon. Anyway, that was the home page. We don't have the profile page yet, so let's give it a screenshot of the Panels app and ask it to recreate that. And, it's done. You can see that it looks very close to the original, maybe even better. This is super cool. Now, we have to move on to the Explore page. You might be wondering where these images are coming from. Well, Claude Dev automatically fetched some static images from Unsplash, but we'll add the API at the end once we finalize the UI. So, let's configure the Explore page. The Explore page looks like this, and when I click something, it tries to filter it, which I think is cool but sometimes it goes berserk 
and makes the filters too large. So, I asked it to fix that, and it did. However, in the process, it messed up the grid, so I had to wrestle with it again and again. Eventually, I got it to work. Now, it looks pretty good. This is super cool too. So, this is what we've built so far. Now, we need to implement the Unsplash API key. Let's ask it to do that. I sent the prompt here, and as you can see, it's working, and it's done. It created an ENV file where we enter our access key, and we also need to install a few things. Let me just do that real quick. Everything is set up, and this is what it looks like now. You can see the API is working pretty well, although there are still some UI issues, like the text going out of the area and stuff like that. So, I sent it a screenshot with a prompt, and it's fixing that now. Also, I've noticed that when you give Claude visual references, it works incredibly well, which is awesome. Anyway, it's done now, and you can see it looks much better. We can also see different categories of images on the Explore page by selecting a category, which is just awesome. Now, if we click on an image you'll see that every image is categorized as uncategorized. Instead of that, let's ask it to display the author's name and picture as well. I sent that prompt, and it did it. Now, if we look at it, you can see the author's name and image, which is great. After this, I fixed a bunch of other stuff, like dark theme, light theme, and the addition of a set as wallpaper button. It only had a download button before. I also polished a few other things. So, now we have the final app here. This is the For You page, where you can see all the top trending images from Unsplash. If you click on one, you can download it or set it as your wallpaper. You can set it as your home screen, lock screen, or both. Apart from that, there's the Explore option where you can browse more images based on categories like nature, cityscape, and more. If you're not a fan of the dark theme, just go to your profile and switch to the light theme for a soothing experience. So, that's the app. I think it's pretty good and works really well. This is what you'd expect from a wallpaper app, and it's very much on par with the Real Panels app. I was short on time, Otherwise, I could have made it even better. This is just a proof of concept, showing how easy it is to ship something these days with AI if you know how to use it correctly. This whole session cost me $50 according to CloudDev, but it was free because I used Google Vertex AI, which recently added the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet model, and they give you $300 worth of free credits. I just use that because you can easily configure it with CloudDev. If you're using real credits, it's much cheaper through Anthropic or Open Router, which supports prompt caching, making it up to 80% cheaper. So, if you're using real credits, keep that in mind. In real world costs, it would probably be around $10 to $15 with caching. Anyway, this is super cool. I think it's a great option to generate cool stuff. I don't know about panels, but this is definitely a cool app I was able to create. I'll post the full screen cap of the process, about an hour long, for members only. So, please consider joining. This also gives us a great insight into how you can create something as good as what big companies and developers are making, for dirt cheap, with AI. This is really heading in a good direction. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the Super Thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the Join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then. Bye.